specifically, what are the conspiracy guys saying? Well, they're claiming that when you look at the footage of the astronauts hopping around slowly in the moon's gravitational field, which is one-sixth that of Earth, that that movement was achieved not by going to the moon, but by using a special camera which filmed the astronauts at a higher speed than normal, so that when it was projected back at a normal frame rate, the astronauts' movements were slowed down, imitating the way it would look on the moon. Well, we should do exactly that and see what it looks like. That's exactly what I was thinking. Let's do it. And to recreate their very own moonwalk, they're back at the Alameda Naval Base and Building 24. Um, we're going to try and replicate several of the gestures we see the astronauts doing on the moon. And the three we've narrowed it down to are jumping straight up into the air. Come on out here and give me a salute. Big Navy salute. Off the ground, the floor. Skipping, which is a kind of a two-leg hop. Notice he puts both feet on the ground at the same time with each jump. And it looks like it's a really efficient way to move around. The third is just a straight leg-over-leg -leg run. We're going to match the camera angle and match the technique supposedly used to fake it and see what we get. By recording at 48 frames per second and playing back the tape at the regular 24, you get beautifully smooth slow motion. All right, do the run. With this effect, Adam's movements do have a certain weightless quality. But to be sure if it's the technique NASA used, we have to simulate one-sixth gravity, repeat the three actions, and then compare the footage. Now it's time to break out the gravity rig. And this was put together for us, purpose-built by Trapeze World. The gravity rig is designed to give me total freedom of motion while making me weigh exactly what an astronaut on the moon would weigh. That is one-sixth of what that fully loaded astronaut would have weighed on Earth. Well, the other thing left is to put on the suit and really try this. Now, I know before you write to complain that this suit's a replica, that it's not pressurized, that I'm not doing this in a vacuum or with real moon dust around, I know. What we are trying to look at here is purely about the movement and gesture of the astronauts. We know that Neil Armstrong, in all of his gear, weighed about 350, 360 pounds, which means if I'm going to be correctly weighted for our moon, I'm going to need to weigh just about 60 pounds. Ha, ah, 62. That's close enough for me, man. Let's do it. So under lunar-like gravitational conditions, Adam gets to repeat his moonwalk exercises. But the difference between Adam and Armstrong is NASA's rigorous training regime. It's a thing to wear a rig like this. It takes a lot of stamina. It's also making me quite sore in some very private places. It's a lot easier in this rig to match what, the kind of movements we see the astronauts make in the NASA footage. I mean, it really kind of lends itself to the weird center of gravity that happens when you weigh less, how much little movements make a big difference in, in how you go. I feel like this is looking really close to what NASA shows on the moon. Adam's right. On first viewing, it does appear to be a closer match. But at Mission Control, the evidence is far from clear cut. If you take a close look at the slow motion skip, Adam's efforts to get the correct height and distance means his helmet is jerking around in a distinctly Earth-like fashion. But it's equally clear the gravity rig doesn't quite work either. Adam's weight might be technically correct, but he lacks that smooth, low-gravity look. Back at HQ, the guys settled in to review the footage in detail. The lower right is much better, but it's not even close. But just like Sir Mick, they still can't get no satisfaction. Well, the slowed down frame rate doesn't match the NASA footage. No. The gravity rig, it's better, but I'd still have to say it doesn't nail it. Yeah, neither of them are there. I wish that we could somehow get ourselves into a moon's gravity environment. Then I'd feel comfortable calling this one. That can be arranged. Really? And here at Zero G in Florida, they get to do just that. In order for us to do this accurately, we need to be properly weighted. Since Zero-G is providing us with the moon's gravity, one-sixth Earth's gravity, I need to have the exact amount of equipment weight on me that the original Apollo astronauts had on the moon. And that's about 180 pounds of stuff. And it's uncomfortable. It's time for the pre-flight briefing with in-flight info from Zero-G's Elizabeth Underwood. Elizabeth, 
Now that we're just about to go on, I want to know how good a simulation of zero gravity is this? It's not a simulation at all. It is the real deal. It's the exact same technique that NASA's been using to train their astronauts for the last 50 years. And it works like this. A series of parabolic arcs will give the passengers the physical sensation of weightlessness. And just for us, the pilot will adjust the angle of the parabola, making the microgravity in the cabin an exact match to the moon's gravitational pull, which just leaves the guys to step up, strap in, take off, and suit up. I look good, right? It's good. I look damn good. So right now, I'm loaded up with an extra 180 pounds on my body. In a few minutes, we're going to actually get to try this out in moon's gravity. And I got to tell you, I can't wait. This is a heavy suit. Adam doesn't have to wait long because the guides soon have everyone into position for the first pass. And as G-Force One gently arcs into its dive... Ah, oh, that feels cool. Adam and Jamie... Oh, here it comes. ...know what it feels like to walk on the moon. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> that... That's 100% wacky right there. Calibrated to match the moon's gravitational pull, the guys just get time to take it all in before... The call goes out to hit the deck, because as the plane begins to pull out of the dive, the G-forces go into the positive. There is a cost to being weightless. The other end of the roller coaster, you've got almost twice Earth's gravity. That's kind of terrifying at first, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I've never experienced anything like that. It is really disconcerting to first weigh double your weight and then one-sixth your weight. In fact, at one-sixth my weight, I felt pretty much weightless. I felt like I could jump 10 feet in the air. This is a first, even for me. Now that the guys have their bearings, the testing can begin. Ready? Adam copies the same run and skip as before, This time, leaving out the jump because of height restrictions in the cabin. The movement felt totally natural as soon as I started doing it. And all the NASA footage makes sense to me now. The skipping they did is a totally efficient way to move in that gravitational pull. I couldn't think of a better confirmation for the NASA footage than trying this myself. When Adam was walking or running, he was experiencing the exact same thing that Neil Armstrong would have on the moon. It was one-sixth Earth's gravity. Adam did a great job with the bungee cords. It looked pretty convincing, but being here on this plane in microgravity and watching him, it's totally different. Nothing really compares to what we saw here on this plane, so as far as I'm concerned, they went to the moon. Dude, that was awesome. We have been very thorough here. Yeah, you can't get much tidier than that. I mean, not only did we start out by replicating precisely the circumstances that theorists say were used to fake the moon footage. But we also put ourselves in a calibrated moon gravity environment. The theory that it's faked, bust. Busted. Busted.